Let's get the podcast started. What is up, dudes? Hello, hello, mic check. Just hanging out, so I had to unmute. There we go. You are all good. Peg, are you there? Yo. Awesome. Uh, like like I said before, uh, everybody, again, welcome uh, from all the streams to the podcast. This is the first episode of Tarkov Talks. Um, and if you guys have any questions for us or any questions in the chat, we're going to answer them hopefully mid to the end. We have a lot of topics to talk about, a lot of stuff to get through. So uh, be patient, and we will hopefully be able to answer some of the questions from you guys. Uh, with that being said, uh, one peg's going to start us off, and he's going to basically fill us in on the last podcast that uh, the devs from Tarkov had uh, li- led by Nikita. Go ahead. Evening, boys. So, uh, yeah, uh, podcast recap. Apologies for my voice sounding like uh, a bullfrog that somebody ordered from Wish. But, uh, <laughs> uh, got a little head cold. Um, anyway, uh, the first thing... Uh, well, there was like three major things. The first was Nikita talked about there being uh, a trader on Lighthouse, which we knew that was coming. Um, they're going to be physically located in the actual Lighthouse, which we also knew was coming. Um, what's that? Oh, nope, he's good. He was just uh, fixing some of the stuff. Okay, got you. Uh, he said that the trader might be killable. Well, actually, the question was whether or not the trader was killable. We've always kind of assumed that the trader would be killable, but... Uh, the question was whether or not he would be, and they kind of asked, and Nikito refused to answer it, and he said, you'll just have to wait and see this time. Um, so I guess we'll have to see. Um, he did say that the trader's going to have interactions with, like, full dialogue options, like a character from, like, a more traditional RPG. So there'll be, you know, a conversation thing that goes back and forth. He'll have uh, missions to send people on, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, there's going to be a number of scab bosses on Lighthouse. We know that he said that there's going to be up to four um, the most notable is a sniper boss that guards the lighthouse, and he's told us before that there's going to be like a, you're going to need a token or some kind of a pass or whatever in order to be able to approach the lighthouse, like a ticket to be able to walk up. Otherwise, he's going to light you up and kill you. Um, and then the the other major one was the permadeath, permanent death of your character. This is the hot one. <laughs> the hot one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question was, uh, they were they were talking to Nikita about permanence. And it kind of came up where people were complaining about uh, scav karma and how they shot Santa like 75 times and now they're negative 4,000 in, in scav rep. Uh, personally, I think you can just let people burn. It's their damn fault. Uh, they shouldn't have shot Santa. I mean, two, three times, fine, but you can't be like, oh, yep, he jumped out in front of me for like the 11th time. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> and I know that there's people that get really triggered by me saying that, but, you know, you guys can burn. Uh <laughs> Uh, so he said, um, based on that, like that sense of permanence, that uh, he's been toying with the idea of having it be a scenario where a player could get uh, like a permanent disease or like radiation sickness or something like that that cannot be cured because somebody was um, a little overzealous in a place that they shouldn't have been and uh, your character could get sick. Uh, and and have it be incurable, and at some point, either relatively immediately or in the uh, you know eventual future, they would more or less waste away and die, meaning that the only way that you could continue to play the game would be to reset everything and start over on a level one PMC again. <clears throat> the way he made it sound was it would be like an area or like a like an area of a zone, like some corner somewhere, some obscure place that would be like you know heavily irradiated, for instance. Um, and if somebody decided to go in there because they were trying to get like some good loot that was in that place, if they stayed too long, then it could, you know, generate some lethal dosage of, of radiation, let's say. And then that would kind of like trigger the whole inability to be cured thing. Um, and then I don't know my kind of uh, like the defense of this, if there was one is that we already have some mechanics that already persist through death. We just have like meds that can cure them. So like, if unless you pay therapist for it or unless you have a med kit, like bleeds stay, broken limbs stay for a time. Um, cultist poison persists from raid to raid unless you cure it. Um, so this this seemed to me like it was more like a wasting away progressively thing. And uh, I'm actually like cool with it because I feel like uh, this is one of those situations where like nobody's going to be tossing you into one of those areas. I would assume that they would have like heavily posted signage and 
like the devs will let you know that a new area like that exists and it's kind of like your choice whether or not you decide that you're going to go in there and you would assume you that there, but it's tarkov that is well, true so so that's the other thing right like we have to assume that the game worked the way it's supposed <laughs> to right and we all have seen people that like there's clips everywhere of guys that like warp to other sides of maps yeah. and you know or like some dude could go in there like on the risk and then you know their internet gives out you know the power goes out or like that would be the the excuse oh my you know my internet quit or like the servers are trash and i got kicked off and then my character stayed in that irradiated area for 45 minutes and you know um it's it is it's tarkov so so there is that there is that part but that's kind of like that's all the major shit that got talked about um from the from the podcast uh he didn't really go into an awful lot of stuff it was mostly just you know kind of questions about those kinds of things I think um, I think a lot of people's uh, frustrations with the game is is the obvious, right? <clears throat> Things that aren't intended to work the way that they're working right now, and like, we'll, we'll t- if you talk about raiders, right? Um, we were playing the other day, and we go and we, we go to uh, Lighthouse, and we go to go kill the raiders, and I got a raider who's supposed to be this tactical military grade human being doing burpees as I'm trying to shoot bullets at him. Looks like he's doing push-ups on the ground yeah, and yeah. shit. And then he one taps me with a BP round. And, um, and that's just the AI. Uh, Nikita's talked about this in the past. I, I watched a podcast where, you know, he basically said, we code these different AIs to do certain, certain things. And whenever they don't do it or they do something that isn't intended, it's that code getting mixed up with the uh, randomness of the AI. So if the AI is supposed to leave the gunfight, but then re-aggros and then gets away from aggro, you, that's whenever you get the AIs running in back and forth in circles 50 times after, you know, Rashala gets killed. Or vice versa, if, if you have that AI doing jumping jacks while you're trying to kill him or doing burpees, it's just it's, it's the AI messing up within the code itself. Um, right. I know a lot of people's frustrations, in my opinion, is obviously the hacking epidemic that we're in right now for fucking Tarkov. Um, it's bad. We all know it's bad. But the reality is, is that whenever you introduce something that scares the community, like the idea that you can walk into an area and all your progression and all your stuff is completely gone, you have to reset your account, basically. One thing I will say is, before I let Chief comment, because I know he's very passionate about this also, is I do not think that any of this is going to be, I stumbled in an area, now my account is ruined. I feel like that's like yeah. that's like people's depictions when they hear permadeath or they hear their account's going to have to reset. They're like, oh, I don't want to be playing one day and then die to radiation and then my entire account's gone and ruined. I feel like it's going to be a labeled area you go here. It's kind of like what I what I like to think of it is like the dark zone in um, division. You know you're going there. You know the risks. You know what's going to be in front of you. You prepare for it, and if you fuck up, you're done. You're dead. You're gone. That's just is what it is. And ninety eight percent of the player base probably won't even go there. But that two percent that does are going to be the ones who who get to experience that that daisy like risk times a hundred. They'll also be the ones writing the Reddit thread. Exactly. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Chief. I mean, I'm. I'm. If you, I could see. It depends on how they implement it. I think it could be a fun game mode. I don't think it necessarily should go hand in hand with the overall game. But then again, if it, if it's a common thing and a well known thing, and it, you know, it's turned into the landmines on reserve to where like if you do run into them you're gonna run into them probably pretty damn early into the accounts live and if they have a permanent status and it's a stupidly hardcore game i could see it being um i think in game and they, them having like a sign like the landmine scenario honestly um but why would they have the account reset from radiation but not from like just any regular death it just doesn't make much sense to me if it's a separate game mode and they implemented it differ- differently, that makes sense. And that could be fun. Like a hardcore game mode where if you died, you just lost everything. And it was a completely different, separate type thing, sure. But if it's just them putting it into the game, just to have it in the game where radiation kills you, but not getting blown up by a grenade, you know, doesn't just sends you back to the lobby. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, even if they do market well, it, from a logical standpoint, it doesn't make sense. 
it does it does seem I will say it does seem a little strange that they would talk about like uh some type of disease level permadeath as opposed to a seven six two BP round like going through your skull. <laughs> you know? And then like therapist somehow reassembles your brain and in skull parts and goes like, Okay, pat you on the ass and kinda of, like sends you out the door. You know? Like you have the technology to reassemble somebody's entire head, but you haven't fixed radiation poisoning yet. It's kind of strange. Yeah, I um, I definitely think this. Whenever people talk about silent killers, right? Uh, if if I get, it's the same thing. Whenever I die to desync, you know, um, I would rather have someone walk in and place their cock straight on my forehead and demolish me, rather than take three steps behind a wall and then fall over to head eyes or to ear nape or to some bullshit. I, I would die. I would take a thousand regular deaths over one death that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Um, and the idea that it's going to be one of those things where, I, and I hope you're right. One peg, whenever you say that it's going to be super, dis, you know, there's going to be signs and it's going to be like, you are entering into the fucking morgue. Like you, you are, you are walking into death. If you come by this, because if it isn't, and it's, you know, like the landmines on Lighthouse that are on a random fucking hill with no signs and no nothing, and you lose an entire gear set plus 17 other gear sets from walking over them because you forgot. If it's something mm -hmm. like that, it's I uh, I don't think it's going to affect people like us, the the grinders, the the ones who will always be in and around Tarkov because we love the game. But I do think it's going to affect. The larger streamers who come by just to try it out and they hear content and they go and then they have to reset their account and the brand new players who don't know what they're getting themselves into and they don't watch podcasts like this and they don't read the threads Agreed. and they don't understand what's going on. They don't have it to where every single time BSG tweets, it fucking alerts their phone, you know, um, that's what's going to, I think that's who it's really, really going to affect the most. Is, am I an asshole that I just was like, yo, how many new people could we get to like just wander in there? Or, like, <laughs> could, like, be like, yo, I got someplace to show you. It's really fucking cool. You remember like the like the RuneScape scams that would send you into the wild? They're like, yo, go out there. It's safe. And then you step out there and just get fucking frozen and killed instantly. And it's like, all right. Yeah, where's like, the camera on the frolicking Bambi through the fields of shoreline? <laughs> <laughs> where is that shit i want to see that guy get his head ripped off his shoulders and then turn into a, like a just a hardened grizzled bastard yeah like, I, I need that i need that the amount of times you're like friendly friendly i heard you had a graphics yeah. card <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what i mean like mm -hmm. and that and i think that's that's the biggest uh that's the biggest I, I i would like to think frustration within tarkov community is we all everyone sitting here you guys between us three we probably have well over twenty thousand hours in the game i'm pretty sure sh between peg and sheaf there's thirty thousand but um it's one of those things where for someone who's already intimidated and someone who already has gear fear and somebody who who is already struggling to even get rubles or anything like that they hear that they don't know the context and it scares the absolute shit out of them right and um yeah, yeah that's uh that's definitely one thing um and it, should, it should scare you <laughs> yeah yeah it should scare you motherfucker um sheep i know you have a couple things um so overall how have you guys been enjoying 12.12 .12? yay nay hey, one peg i haven't really gotten to pick your brain too much on the subject honestly like i think that the way that they've built it is the the best experience i've had tarkov wise probably since i started playing uh well no i can't say that i think before before the drop stream like hype and everybody started like you know doing this whole chad superiority shit and that although that's died down like lately um that was probably like the best time but that's like it was all new and everything made me nervous and now i don't get nervous i don't give a shit anymore so uh now though like the way that the mechanics are built i kind of i kind of dig like this version of of tarkov i'm i'm cool with how it's built at the moment um like everything else everything needs like a little bit of tweaking and like lighthouse is still an unoptimized heap of shit <laughs> but you know like i mean i got i got literally like bleeding edge tech sitting in a box over here and like i can only pull like 115 fps with the map on like ultra ultra you know where like if i went and did that in warzone it'd be like 350 yeah so 
you know, it's kind of it's kind of strange, you know, in a way that they they're still like, yeah, we're gonna release the game at the end of the year, but it's still like an unoptimized heap. Amen. So that that's kind of strange. Yeah. Fair. But uh, overall, on on twelve point twelve, the changes they've made, there's not any you would overall just like, nah, that was terrible. I mean, the sound engine is fucked. Still. But it it's was been, that was the same as last fucked, week, right? But yeah, it's, it's been it. fucked, and they know that. Um, there's still some optics shit that's fucked. Like the Schmidt and Bender, uh, one to eight doesn't make any damn sense. It's like a three point five to eight, you know, where like, and like, and they did it with the, in the other scope, the the. Voodoo. Uh, the no, not the voodoo. The um, the other new one that they pulled in, uh, the vortex. They got that one right. I don't know how the hell they couldn't do it on the other one, but I don't know. Um, there's always, but there's always things that they're gonna have to fix because it's it's BSG, and like you know, and the and the the KS twenty three shoots down like a fifteen degree down angle, and that was fixed, and then it wasn't after twelve twelve went live. So, like that was kind of weird. Not because I'm biased over the shotgun, but because like. It had been fixed and then it was unfixed. And it just, I was like, what the hell? And just outside of like the random bugs, pretty solid overall. What, what's your opinion on it? I think it's pretty solid. What's your opinion on it, Hutch? Um, I mean, I'm in the same boat. Uh, it frustrates me whenever I see BSG. I don't want to say it frustrates me whenever I see BSG trying to make changes. Obviously, new content new things that are going to be in the game. We all know we all know the uh the way Tarkov goes, right? They release a they release a patch or they release a, a wipe. Oh, uh, everyone comes over, everyone's playing it. It's the number one game on Twitch, right? And then as the wipe yep. progresses and as people start to level and as us as content creators, majority of our content comes from EFT or probably all of it. Um we grind and we get to the higher levels, we get to the better gear, and the ones who aren't putting in 12-hour days consecutively get left behind, and then they have to fight us with the better bullets, the better gear, the better helmets. Now, I have been in the level 6 gear and been one-tapped by PST probably over a dozen times. It's possible to kill a Chad even whenever they're fucking kitted to, to the absolute max. That, that's, that is what it is. But when you talk about optimization on Lighthouse, that's where I get very annoyed because you can sit there and you can bring in new stuff like the traders and the streets and this, that, and the other. But you're sitting there talking about streets and we have Lighthouse, which again is a big heap of shit whenever you can, when you consider the, the FPS part of it. Like yeah. the, the map itself, I think it is a solo's dream. It is, it is the bigger brother to customs. It's linear. You know where your fights are going to be. The extracts are super close. So if you do win a fight against a, a three-man or even a, a four-man or a five-man, you if you have Paracord Red Rebel, you can literally leave at the best loot location in the map. Shoreline's always open. Path to Shoreline, you can extract whenever you want. It has a lot of factors that a lot of people enjoy and like. The things that are very frustrating, again, FPS, scavs, that, that's a whole conversation within itself, and, yeah. and, and just optimization as a whole. Um, considering 12.12 myself, I've fucking loved it. Uh, this is the longest I've ever played a wipe. Um, this is my second wipe, but I've been around for three wipes. I played the game when it first released and I got lost on woods and uninstalled it. So I've been around for a long time, but this is my second full dive in my bread and butter. And I can say from my first time playing it to now, it is a completely different game and I fucking love it. I, I have no issues with the inertia or whatever at max strength, max endurance. That, that doesn't even come into effect. Inertia is basically gone at max max anyways. Um, and overall, like gunplay, other than like you said, the sounds a heap of fucking dog shit. Everyone understands <laughs> that; they know that. Um, but other than the things that everyone kind of already knows is fucked up, I love the game. There's a couple things that we can we can poke sticks at and say that sucks. Impact grenades is a fucking joke. Um, <laughs> the scavs on lighthouse again. We're gonna talk about that later on. Is a fucking joke. Um, the FPS is awful. 
But overall, when you when you sit back and look at the game, that the progression of the game from even just two wipes ago to now, it's amazing. And uh, and it's really, really – it is in a, a somewhat good spot. Uh, and they just, in my opinion, I said this on stream the other day, instead of looking – to add new things in and to work on new things, I feel like what they need to focus on personally is really making sure that everything they have right now is fucking working. <laughs> you know, like it, mm -hmm. it, they need, they need to make sure that the things that they have is 100% ready to progress into something new into something bigger. But if you progress and you keep progressing and we keep getting new and new shit, which is awesome. We're just going to keep having the same issue, which is Tarkov's issue of two months of everyone loving the game and then everybody leaves other than the Tarkov creators themselves. Well, I you think, know, I think we're, we're in a cycle where it's like, OK, you have with a small, smaller team. I'm not sure how large their team is, but I know they lost some, some of their workers recently. But with a smaller team, you have limited stuff you can work on, right? Or limited time. Um, and you have. You have people that want new content. You would hear so many people be like, they they complain, be like, yo, there's so many people quitting the game because there's no new content. There's no new content. There's no new content. There's no new content. And as soon as they put out new content, now we have people like, yo, don't put any new content out. Yep. Now we need yep. to fix your shit. Fix your shit. Mm -hmm. Fix your shit. Fix your shit. And it's like you're never gonna please both sides. Like I I personally think they've done a good job. I I do get what you're saying on that though. Is like I would I'm fine with either. I'm fine with the new content. I'm fine with um them prioritizing fixing bugs and upgrading you know what they have to do i by no means know where they're at in the back end or the background um back side of things but i'd assume they're working pretty hard on it um and i i have a lot of faith in it overall i from day one when i started playing to now i've had more fun and more fun and more fun and more fun after Agreed. you know eight thousand hours of the game i'm having more fun this wipe than ever and so i've I kind of, at this point, I kind of just put my faith in BSG to put out a solid product. And even if I don't fully understand the back end of it, I, I just trust that they're going to do a good job. And so, it, you know, even back to the whole radiation thing, if that's what Nikita wants to do and team wants to do, fuck it. You know what? I trust them. And I think I think we could adapt. And uh, overall, a lot of people will end up like bitching. But you're always going to have the people that will that will complain. And um, regardless of whether or not they like it. Like they're they're probably gonna still play the game. Yeah, I agree. Or not, I mean, or they're just gonna hate enough and move on, and that's what it is. It's a good thing about video games. It's like there's always the next one. It's like if you're not enjoying Tarkov, then it's not for you, and that's okay. It's not, it's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Think, I, I think do. Uh, go ahead, Peg. Sorry. Well, what I was gonna say is, I think that there's a reason why Tarkov is as popular as it is, and the reason why people, even though they're gonna like, it's so. Yeah, I find this to be funny because like the guys that will slag like let's say there's a the content creator will like slag a mechanic in the game and they'll they'll go off to no end and you know a tweet will get five thousand likes or some shit about how they can't stand a certain mechanic and how it's bullshit and like you know the, the game's unplayable and all this other stuff and oh by the way i'm streaming again tomorrow morning <laughs> you know so what are you gonna be playing tarkov <laughs> i thought you fucking hated it well yeah but i don't want to lose my viewers is really the answer yeah you know yeah and because that's the game that they play and they're still going to go and play it and they're going to bitch, you know, farm the engagement, bro. Like I get it, but you're not really mad if yep. that's the case, you know? Um, but I, I look at it like this. <clears throat> when Nikita first started making Tarkov, he envisioned that Tarkov would have 30,000 players. That's what he wanted. He wanted them 30,000 concurrent players at any point during the day. At, at one point they were at a half a million, 700,000, something like that. They have over a million accounts that are playing the game over the course of a wipe or more. Um, I look at it like if he made the game that he wanted, if he made the game that he wanted and 70% of the player base quit because they couldn't stand it, he still 10 X his pie in the sky number. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's got 10 times the player base that he wanted if 70% of the current player base quits. So to me that, I mean, have you failed? You know what Absolutely I'm saying? Absolutely not. Right. So I look at it like, fuck him. You know, if he wants to make and like, we could all end up hating the game. You know, in six months time, it could all we could all be sitting here going like this game's bullshit. Fuck Nikita. <laughs> and he could just be sitting there like back counting stacks of cash going made the game I wanted still made way more money than I thought, you know, yeah, like and he'll be nothing but happy and go on off to Russia 2028 or whatever. So like I look at it like like more power to him, man. Spread your wings, brother. You know, yeah, because I think and I think the reason why so many people gravitate toward the game is because of that attitude that he has, you know. 
yep. he's willing to try the mechanics and take the flaming and you know just roll with what he wants to do and he'll take the community and uh, he'll take the, the community feedback and stuff but he keeps making his own game uh at least at some level and i think people at you know even if they're going to bitch they still respect him for it and you have to because the alternative is we get another Warzone game that's chock full of cheaters, so fucking bad that like 90% of the player base quits. We get Battlefield 2042 where 99% of the player base have quit, and they blamed it on, uh, they blamed it on Halo, in terms of why the Halo multiplayer coming out as a surprise as to why the player base uh, had this mass exodus, which doesn't make any damn sense, you know. You know, we, it's we funny. Up- I saw a, I saw a, I saw a video of uh, Battlefield, and it was like. Uh, in the ad, expectations, and then it was like reality. And in the ad, the guy's running towards the elevator, hits the elevator, goes up. There's fucking planes flying at each other. Guys get stabbed in the neck in the corner, like absolute warfare. And then in reality, there was one of those little hover things on the roof, just mowing people down with yeah. a barret. You know what I mean? Climbing like, a wall. Yeah, and then, the and then the they click it for the elevator. The elevator's like moving up, like it's a like it's a jigsaw puzzle. Like it's yeah. just, it yeah. was so awful. The guy in the floor below him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a plane yeah. like stuck halfway into the wall, but the the gunner's still working, so he's just yeah, bro. It's it, no and i, I uh, go ahead i don't feel this is the game that sold me on that i would not be a good game reviewer because i thought i had fun on it i had zero expectations well, I i would have got roasted to fucking hell for it and they would have been like dude you're a fucking idiot and i've been like you're, you're probably, right <laughs> dude, we all played we I played together yeah. i played i played with sheaf adam and we played and we played with t ross for like multiple instances and we had a blast yeah, see and that's I, like i got my money's worth out of that game and yeah. i like oh, i had like 100 hours of fun for like a fucking the gold pass purchase it was like that was such a and, but then you read the criticisms that people have of the game and I it's did, all, and it's all completely valid battlefields i didn't go in with any expectations whatsoever so when people were expecting battlefield they got a sellout of a, a shell of battlefield and yep. so that's kind of going back to with tarkov it with nikita how he makes the game he wants to make and yep. it, I, I feel as if he's not a sellout like we don't have in-game skins where i'm running around as a clown right. or a fucking pajama suit dinosaur like i i feel as if I tarkov, have a keychain hanging off the barrel of my gun looking like you know, <laughs> <laughs> a little anime a little anime yeah. uh waifu just I sitting have, there have the head of a furry like just chilling off the side <laughs> of my rifle <laughs> Yeah, man. There's a, I think there's a reason that Tarkov ruins other FPSs for people. When they play Tarkov and get hooked on Tarkov, they can't really go and play another FPS and feel the same way. And so I think that, they, that Tarkov has nailed that um, better than any other game, and they continue to do so. And so that's kind of where I landed with just like, as overall, like even with our complaints, like we would still give this patch or this wipe a thumbs up as a whole. Yep. Um, and so it's, it's yeah. I, I trust Nikita and team. Overall, they, they've improved the game majorly. Um, out of the improvements on the flea market, is there anything that you guys would like to see added back or taken away? Um, okay, so, and, and here's my thing. I have something I, I, I want to say, but at the same time, I, I don't want to say it because I don't really hate it. Um, and I understand why it's uh, implemented. And I, I just want to say this mainly for the viewer standpoint and kind of help them understand more. So obviously we have all tried to buy a slick and we have all been greeted with the five seconds after it comes up on the market, they are all gone. And it's very frustrating. And I remember I tweeted out a, um, a moment where I was literally sitting there and I was refreshing and the, it came up instantly I instantly went for the buy and I didn't get it. And I was so salty. And I was just like what you guys were saying. Fuck this. This is ridiculous. I'll be live tomorrow, 6 p.m. EST. See you guys there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was that guy because I was so frustrated. And then I sat back and I thought about it. And I was like, all right. My biggest frustration as a newer player, because when me and Jared, so I guess you could say I've played four wipes, like, actually played four wipes so when me and summit first came over to tarkov it was uh not the third one i was telling you guys about when i started but we came over about three weeks into the wipe before and we were level ones just going in trying to get gear and and i and when i remember it i remember all the good times i don't remember all the times although it happened plenty where we would run into a guy or run into a team, and every single member of that team were all level 5, level 6, slicks, reddit armor, 
Ford armor because there was no inertia and all this and the other bullshit. And they were all in gear that was like impossible to slaughter. And they were all max level or they weren't even max level. They were level like 40, but they had the best of the best gear. I remember being so frustrated because I was like, I'm sitting here in my fucking PACA or in my fucking 6B and I can't tank bullets while these guys are eating rounds like they're a fat kid at a Christmas party. You know what I mean? Like they're just eating cake like it's nothing. And I sat there and I, and I really looked at myself. I'm like, you're bitching about something that you bitched about whenever it was a thing. And now you're bitching about it because it's not a thing. So looking back at it and, and understanding, yes, it sucks not being able to get labs key cards. Yes, it sucks being able to not get your level fives, level sixes whenever you want. Yes, it sucks. But at the end of the day, I love running into a fight and killing a 45 and plus. Because at 45, you should have max traders, max everything. At 45, you're still struggling to wear level five all the time until you uh, complete the interchange quest for the six PC. Or the CPC or whatever it's called. The level 5 uh, armor that you could pretty much get anytime you want right now. It's the only armor that is level 5 that you can get other that is an armored rig. There is no other quality level 5, level 6 other than gazelles and uh, the other Ford armor, which is unlocked by a quest. Right. Just wait till late wipe, late wipe when most people have that quest done. Like the backpacks are going to sell out so quickly. Yep, backpacks. I mean, you already see the blackjack is selling out within 30 minutes from Ragman, right? Yep. The only and backpack he's... right now that you can get on a consistent basis is the the couch. And the only reason you can get the couch is because it's 240000 now that the military cable is going up in price because everyone yep. wants the bag for labs. So it's already happening. You're already seeing late game effects start to come in. You know, obviously me and Sheaf has been playing labs the last couple of days. You, I can see it. Every, every labs we go into, it's completely packed with players and everyone's rocking the big backpack. But what you don't see is, is everyone rocking level five, level six. People still are rocking TV one tens because the price to bullet to kill ratio isn't worth it. And Everyone's rocking bullets. Uh, you know, we, I, I know you guys have dealt with the same thing. You go into labs and your viewers instantly ask, why aren't you wearing a helmet? The bullets are too yeah. good. You know, like we all know the way the bullets work. Uh, one peg did a, an amazing video on it. If you guys are watching this, go and check it out on his YouTube channel. He explains exactly how bullets work due to the lengths that they are shot or how far the bullet is flying, which I'll have him explain a little bit now. But in labs, none of those effects happen. And as long as you're rocking M855A1 and it's, you're not wearing a wrist, and I'll use that as a base bullet, and above, you are one-shotting everything other than wrist alton. And even then, if you hit face mask, you have a chance. So yeah. there's no reason to wear helmets or sometimes even a level 5 if someone's rocking M61s, SP6, shit like that. Um... If you don't mind, one, can you go ahead and explain how the, the bullets work to uh, a dumb person like myself where it's just like the more of the raw knowledge of uh, ex expectations of like MA56 uh, and shit like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the further away that a bullet travels from when you fire the gun, it loses damage and penetration now. It, all, it did a little, little, little bit in like prior to 1212, but now that 1212 is here, it loses it at a much faster rate, basically. So depending on the muzzle velocity, like how long, basically how long of a barrel you have um, and the type of round that you're firing, the gun that you're firing it out of, uh, that energy loss comes faster or, or slightly slower based on that stuff. <clears throat> Larger calibers tend to lose their energy a little bit less. So like it's become this thing where you have to find a balance between like uh, higher flesh damage and some penetration rather than... Um, using 995 or um you know 855a1 or something like that at, at distances over you know 100 meters um because what was happening and they fixed it a little bit but what was happening is there was like seven or eight rounds in the game that would one tap somebody's head at uh that kind of range and still have enough penetration to get through like a u-lock helmet uh that's increased to like maybe a dozen rounds maybe 14 or something now i haven't really looked but um, most, most of them still retain their damage, but like, like, uh, uh, 
a Golnik after like 70 meters, 80, 80 something meters, something like that. It won't one tap somebody's head because it loses the two points of damage more than it had for a head hitbox. Uh, shit, shit like that. So like it used to be, you know, just bring high pen ammo to on, on every map and you'll be able to drop somebody. No problem. But now it doesn't really work as well anymore. Um, so, but on labs, you know, if you're going to labs, uh, you know, maybe a helmet makes sense, but on most maps, it, it doesn't matter because nobody, people are still going to use like BP rounds and try and get shooter borns done. And if you're far enough away, you're going to be lucky enough to not die from it because the flesh damage just isn't high enough when they hit you. So they got to do it twice and then people get pissed off because you just took a seven, six, two round to the head and you didn't die, you know, like it went in, but it didn't kill you, which kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes I tank bullets to the head anyway. You know, it's light yeah. work. Just six skull, bro. Six skull. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead, Chief. <laughs> yeah. What were you saying, so, Chief? Overall, I'm not with, with the flea market. I'm not hearing so much a complaint with like things they've removed or added, but so much the the trader limits and uh, I love limits. to if if you're asking about the remove and add, I love everything that they've done. Removing high high class bullets forcing people to quest and level up their traders, forcing people to use their hideouts if they if they neglect their traders and they just want to go and PvP or whatever. It's forcing people to to really work to unlock armors, not just uh whenever I first came into the game, I played with Will and Willers was like, "Listen, fill your bag, make a lot of rubles, you can buy whatever you want." And I was like, "Hell yeah, I was level 20 rock and level 6 gear because I I hated yeah. quests, you know? Fuck quests." So I was buying anything I wanted, and I love the fact that it is now it's like if you want to become one of the big dogs, then you're going to have to work for it. I have no complaints whatsoever on being gatekept uh, basically until you want to work hard enough to get it. Uh, I think a lot of newer players in, in the player base don't like that, and they're afraid of the grind, but be honest, like, if you're sitting here and, and you're treating Tarkov the way Tarkov's meant to be treated, you shouldn't be able just to go on a marketplace and get M995 at 300 or it'd be probably like $1,800 a round just because you got 20 million rubles. Yeah. Level 10, level 15, you won the game. Game was over. Yep. Oh, yeah. Was, if you had money, you could do whatever you wanted. Yep. I think and my first wife might even unlock Jaeger. Hmm. Straight up, just like pvp yeah, for, uh, and this was back before the found in rate stats was a thing. So you could go get their gear and then just resell it on the flea market. Even with found in raid. raid, bro, my first wipe, I didn't even, once I got past this wipe, once I got past finding the, the aircrafts crashed on shoreline, once I got past like the 25 scavs killed with a, uh, with an AK 74U, I was lost because I've never done any of those quests before because you've never needed to, you know? And right. I like the fact that I was forced to do quests because, number one, I had more fun. But number two, you know, you're not seeing, like we've already said, those level 20s or even, you know, bringing hackers into the conversation. You're not seeing those guys being able to just go and buy the best bullet and wipe lobbies at level six anymore. It's a deterrent. No, not just now they're scanning people's inventories and yelling at them to drop their key cards. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I saw which that. Is, which is an interesting shift because now instead of avoiding players and farming stuff out of, you know, containers or whatever, now they're just going after, like, scavs that spawn in with decent shit and telling them to drop it or they kill them. Yeah. And then they just take that stuff out of their inventory, which is kind of crazy because you're giving it away. But, I mean, by the time they get caught up with Battle Eye catches them or whatever, maybe they made their money. I don't know. Which brings me to uh, my first question for you guys. And it's, you know, again, hot topics, right? Um, when it comes to cheaters, I think we're seeing now, uh, I know personally I've seen plenty of times where viewers come into my chat. There's a, there's a cheater streaming right now hacking on Tarkov, and the hacks on Tarkov are at a level that they've never been before, or at least openly streamed at or given in my opinion when it comes to cheating in any game the moment where people are willing or risking to get banned because they just don't care that's the moment when it gets the worst because if we'll use rust for an example i know their anti-cheat sucks and they have tons of other stuff 
But they, if they see someone even stream sniping, those devs will ban so fucking quick. Or it gives the opportunity to the people who run the servers to ban and this, that, and the other. What is ways, in your opinion, that Tarkov could do better with just being able to get those fucking scum of the earth out uh, out of our game? Because I, I feel like personally right now, and again, when you look statistically at the amount of players in the game and the amount of people playing the game, and it's bigger now than it's ever been, obviously, it's just like anything. The more players, the more cheaters. That's just how games work. Is there anything that you think that they could do to be able to deter cheaters a little more? I mean, outside of going like the full World of Warcraft route where they just sell the rules themselves, I think they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah. Like, they, their hands are kind of tied as a whole. I like, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. There's definitely a lot of hackers in the game. We ran into quite a few last night, but as, you know, out of the, you know, 8,000 hours that I've played, very little of it, as a percentage wise, has been ruined by hackers. But with, I think their hands are kind of tied with uh, with the engine they're on, if I'm not mistaken. It's not necessarily things that they can change with the anti-cheat. So we're stuck with the shitty anti-cheat until they upgrade the engine. So that'd be the first step. So outside of that and going the full World of Warcraft method, like they kind of have made decent changes. They haven't been too drastic to where like they're going to scare off a major amount of the player base. But you see these steps each wipe, like found in raid status and um, the weight system and being only able to pick up so many graphics cards in raid and or bitcoins or whatever and um you know different ways that they can try to deter or make it more annoying or less profitable per hour for these cheaters to where is they have two different sets of cheaters that they have to deal with the the, the people that want to do it for fun and then the people that want to do it for profit um and if they can make the ones that want to do it for profit more annoyed and cut into their hourly then all of a sudden that you know they cut it down in half and now they all have, have to do with the rest of the fucking cheaters like every other video game in the fucking world, like Fall Guys had cheaters on it. Yep. You know what I mean? Like if there's cheaters on fucking Fall Guys, like why would there not be on Tarkov, right? And so it just, there's always going to be cheaters, I feel like. But I think overall with what with with what they can do, they, they're doing a decent job, in my opinion. But I'm also speaking from an NA perspective. I haven't played EU. I haven't played OC. I have no clue how much they run into hackers. I don't run into... A, from you know, what I heard, it's like a, 10 a times... Amount that, that's, yeah, it's um, 10 times worse it's than it's what we obvious deal about with. It. It's 10 times worse. The only hackers I run into anymore are guys that are, like, new to it. Like, yeah. dudes that don't know any better. Because I have, I have the green name, you know? I got the yeah. Sherpa badge. And they can tell what version of an account somebody has on their, like, UI bullshit. So, like, the only guys that will, like rage or challenge me with uh with cheats on are the guys that don't know any different yeah. and then you know in my case you know i have a direct line to god so we just send a dm off with a little clip ski and then they don't exist anymore see and um, i wish after uh, they get reviewed obviously like i'm not gonna pull a ninja and be like man this guy is cheating you know like it doesn't yeah. work like that but i wish um, that that line was a little more what open. i what i find to be funny though and maybe this is something that it gets transitioned into is like when you're playing in a certain raid in a certain way, when you have enough experience, you can tell based on how somebody else reacts to you and your positioning whether or not they know something that they shouldn't yep. in, in a lot of cases. So in a matter of example, right? Like um, uh, underground reserve, I'm coming down a ramp. Guy checks me, starts firing toward the footsteps. Okay, fine. Turn around, run back up the ramp, flank outside, come back through queen, and downstairs behind him. And he never left, like, where the little, like, water thing is underground there, like, over by the office. You know mm -hmm, what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That little, like, where water Where the raiders spawn. Where the raiders spawn, um, yeah. He was in the hallway, like, between that little, like, office and, like, where the little, like, water moat bullshit is um, underground, like, between uh, whatever it is, Queen and, and uh, Bishop. Bishop. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> um, I crept walked, crept from the first floor out by like the server room all the way down the, 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 the gated door was open all the way down the stairs. Like, you know, I, I got um, arguably, I have some of the best hearing out of anybody that plays this fucking game. Like I can hear shit that other people are like, how the fuck? And, um, I know that there was no way that this dude heard me. I got, I don't even know, like within five meters of this dude. And I can hear him like stepping back and forth. Like, down the hallway, I can hear him stepping back and forth, creeping, creeping, creeping. He gets up, 
like to where he would have had eyesight of me and shoots six rounds right into the lip of the ledge, like uh, at the stairs. And I hadn't made a noise from 50 meters out. And for those and who don't understand, VoIP, I'm like, let me stop bullshit. you really quick. Let There's me stop no you really fucking quick. way. Yeah. I'm like yelling at this dude on VoIP. There's no way that you knew I was here. Yeah. I don't fucking buy it. Turn it off. Like, actually, you know what? And then I just said, fuck it. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to walk toward you. Kill me because I'm going to send the clip. He wouldn't engage me. Yep. He walked away. He left because yep. he knew that I knew. And he turned around and walked. Yep. So and for like, those who don't in understand. In a lot of cases, you can tell when guys are cheating. Yeah. And yeah. if you call them out, they get real weird about it all. Yeah. And, so, and like. Yeah. And that specific that effect, area, there are that is like. That have enough experience to where they could. And this has happened in other games where guys that have like gobs and gobs of experience that are relatively trusted. And it's and Tarkov has done this in the past where they've had people review it, like whether or not it needed to be escalated to a dev to like actually like look into it. They've had volunteers that have actually reviewed tape. Oh shit! From, I'm muted. You know, clips <laughs> or whatever else from content creators. Sorry, I'm muted. Like, chat. Yeah, that dude's probably cheating. And then they send it up. Now there's no there's no in game like you know kill cams and stuff. I would assume that Tark and the devs probably have the ability to run reels and like maybe they have demo files that they're just not letting us use. But I look at something like that as like a, a dude that ran their own server and they can follow a guy around on Rust, you know, and make they're making YouTube videos constantly about like banning cheaters and then checking against the VAC system to see if they get VAC banned over it. Um, I look at something like that as like an easy backup for like what Battle Eye is doing and everything else. Like if you added the human element to it and there was more than one person in agreement that somebody would clearly was doing something shitty, like you could just start purging people. And, and like, for that, you know, uh, for people who don't understand later. that area that you're speaking of, uh, on top of that staircase, I was muted by the way. I was trying to like, I was trying to like tell you like, let me explain something. I didn't realize I was muted. Um, yeah, yeah. that staircase, number one, the audio is completely fucked. Like it's so well, yeah. hard to be able to number one anticipate someone being there, but to engage in a gunfight with someone on top of that staircase with the high ground with everything, you got to ego peak, lay down some crazy shit just to be able to even fight you. So mm -hmm. the fact that, and I feel like that's with a lot of viewers, they don't understand and they get like, obviously there's always going to be those viewers. There's always going to be people who no matter what happened to you, whatever, no matter what happens to you as a streamer, they're always going to doubt. You could get shot. I had, you know, me and she were in a game. He's wearing a wrist helmet. A guy walks up level 34 and hits 15 shots in his wrist and kills him. Right now it was, Close range, but I know, you know, and Sheaf knows that there is no way if your life depended on it and you had a, a stock M855 gun or even a kitted M855 M4, you are not hitting 15 shots on the head without whiffing at all. And you're not taking a down a guy with a wrist and being able to consistently hit that dude in the face with M855 and and not miss. Like that's just – or it, it's just, it's un, it's, it's not real. Like that's just, it's impossible. I don't care if you have 20,000 hours in the game. It's very rare to ever see that, especially at a lower level guy and, um, and to see that stuff. And especially in your scenario, you walk yeah. out, you do all of that. And then yeah, he still knows where you are. That's where as a, a player who has as many hours as you have, you can look at that and be like, that didn't feel right. That guy's fucking cheating. Yep. And People in your chat are going to go, how are you, How do you know he's cheating? Like, that guy yep. could have guessed, you know? That guy could have relocated like you did, and my dad works for Microsoft, you know what I mean? Like, they, there's always a reason, and that's what makes Tarkov, in my opinion, with the cheating situation, so hard to be able to know if, number one, someone's cheating unless you're wearing a wrist helmet um, or an alt or something like that. But to be able to piece that puzzle together and be like, this was fucking bullshit, and this is the reasoning why. When I explain to people why I think they're cheating and I tell them the process that I go through mentally whenever I get one-tapped and I check non-EOD. A lot of people get offended when I'm like, he's non-EOD, be careful. Uh -huh. The reality yep. is, is this. I am not hating on anyone who bought uh, a game for less than $150 with EOD edition. I'm not. For people who think that I am, I promise you, spend your money wisely. If this wasn't my job, I wouldn't spend $150 for EOD. I wouldn't. But as a hacker, 
especially someone who's literally just blatantly hacking, you're going to buy the cheapest version of game, so it makes your margins more. If you're spending $40 instead of $150, not that you need an ass the size of uh, fucking Canada anyways, because you don't need to store any loot because you're killing everyone. You're going to buy a $40 version of a game. You're going to make $120 off that, and then it is what it is, right? Um, that's why EOD is, is a check. Number two, if they're rocking a fucking blackjack on customs or a big-ass couch backpack on top of being non-EOD. Sus. And none of this would even make sense unless you were killed by them in a weird way. So you go across these steps, and as a player who has, you know, again, you guys have a lot more hours than me, but I'm approaching 4K hours, like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't make any sense. And yes, we are streamers. Yes, we sit there and we'll be like, this guy's fucking cheating. And sometimes they aren't. But that's us as humans making a mistake. And I you would rather... Level nine. Exactly. Like, that. the first thing I say yeah. is whenever I die to that, I'm like, yo, chat, what's his level? And everyone looks it up and they're like, level 13. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah that yeah. guy's fucking cheating. And then you have those one or two... Legit. Yeah, and then you have those one or two people legit. in chat that's like, I've been killed that way before. And it's like, well, you were fucking probably cheated against. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't change. It's the same thing when you talk about stream snipers. And, and all of us know they exist. I, I mean, I've been in a situation before I was a streamer myself where I would see people streaming. I'd be like, ah, I want to fucking get in a game with them and see how good they are against me. It's natural. And it's, and I get that. But whenever but I don't you think you're saying, like, if you die to a white name, every white name is a no, cheater. Exactly. There's a much higher probability that the guy with the white name that killed you did some sus shit. Exactly. You know? And that's if and you that's, die to something sus, the probability of them having a white name is pretty high. That's it. And that's and that's what I'm trying to say. I'm glad and you And a raid backpack and a kilo helmet and yeah. probably some edgy name as well on it's top of it. All of the puzzle it's pieces. Just, it's, it's not just like non EOD one part. name, yeah. It's yeah. like the and that and that's just at, that's just at the very base. That's not even counting all the in-game mechanics that, that exactly. normal players don't do unless you have a third-party information. Like you wouldn't make that call unless you're like just 100% certain that you're winning that fight with cheats because normal players, especially in Tarkov, like think back to when we first started or we're level 34 and like, you know, or lower level, like you're not going to full send on labs with that big a kit around a corner and just push 1v5 and win 1v5 as a level 13. It's just not like, it. Could, there's a world, sure, maybe. Yeah, I would still rather throw the report and I'm, I'm light with the report button. I probably, I could count on, you know, hands and feet how many times I've reported this wipe. Out of like you know 1500 raids yeah. so yeah very, same. very light on the report um but you save that cheat call for the ones that you're pretty damn sure of yeah, yeah. but yeah it, it's it's a it's a multitude of things um overall though i like they need they need a better anti-cheat it is what it is there's sh there's sh they shouldn't be able to just run around especially in uh on twitch like in my opinion that should be like uh yo <laughs> we, we need to get this guy banned like ASAP, absolutely. Yeah. With it, within uh, within minutes, he needs to be off our fucking game. And that's but, a, that's the difference. I've I've had and 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 like one peg said, he has a direct line to fucking people to get banned on Tarkov. I personally don't. I wish, I personally wish that there would be a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to say this. It sounds again. I'm not trying to. Say, it makes me sound like an asshole, but. To be honest, entitled. entitled, exactly. That's the perfect word. But I'm sitting there and like I'll have people blatant stream sniping or blatant hacking or whatever. And, you know, I wish I had a, an avenue to fucking reach out to somebody. Now, I also understand, you know, I was I got fucking checked by Willers yesterday. Cause I was sitting there. We were talking about uh, we were talking about stream items. And I was like, oh, dude, I, I want this fucking stream item. And he was like, ah, you've only been playing for like three wipes. I've played for seven before I got mine, you know, and I was like. Damn, he just slapped me with his dick. Like that's that's what just happened. He just slapped me in the face with it. But that's the he reality check. Yeah, exactly. And 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 that's the reality of it. Where you know I'm sitting there and I want to be having a direct line. I want this and that, but I haven't earned it. You know, and that's something that it's frustrating for me. But when it, when it comes to like the Twitch stuff, you know, like there was a, a cheater that was streaming. I can't get him banned off BSG. But then he had the audacity to raid me after he was done streaming his cheats. You know, I took that a little, I took that, you know, as like a backhand. So I reach out to my guys at Twitch and got his ass fucking banned. 
like I can't affect you on BSG, but if you have the audacity to do that shit, I'll fucking take care of it on uh, what I can't take care of it on, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I man, that's a, a slippery slope though with, uh, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, if, if he's streaming like openly, blatantly on Twitch, like, yo, these are my hacks. Like, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's what I'm spot. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Having yeah. any sort of other direct line with, with players being any cheat, I think is just too much, especially content creators. I agree. Um, I mean, maybe proven there's proven ones. Like I'm not, I'm not like, maybe I'd give myself that power, but even then I wouldn't want that responsibility Agreed. type shit. But I, I think people are way too quick to want to ban someone like oh, I yeah, wrong sure. in scenarios where, where I accusated and the person ended up like fucking proving me wrong tenfold and going and winning a world's event. Like I was well, like, I, got, oh, well, I was a speed hacker according to deadly slob. Uh, yeah, Summit then, was a speed hacker according to uh, what's his name? Who makes the uh, YouTube videos and the updates, you know, in a firefight with doodles and chicken. And, and, uh, he saw me on the steps and all of a sudden I was gone, like the flash, like a streak just, and yeah. he was like a thousand percent hacker. And it was me. You know? Black. Yeah, it was, it was decent. It was decent. Yep. And you know? so it's like, it's, it's hard. It's, it's so fucking hard to tell sometimes. And it's like, is it a one-off scenario or is it, uh, like this, if the person's just fucking blatant flying in the air, you know, comes down and talks to you and is yeah, like, yeah. that labs card sheaf, then yeah, like I would love to be able to send that to be a sheaf. Or the no dude problem. that spawned in was like, there's a Ledex right over there. Like, yeah. as he spawned. He or the like, dude who killed you, Sheaf, with the MA55 and then sat there and, and waited for me to leave red so he could kill me and take my gear yeah, yesterday. That, I got, that one was blatant as fuck. The yeah. Ledex one, though, there, dude, there's been so many times where I've spawned in and, like, you're like, you make that call. It's like, oh, like no, no, he was like, he, spawned, he, he, he spawned and turned 90 degrees to the right and said, there's a Ledex behind that ambulance. It was 150 meters away. And he's like, I've never <laughs> seen him spawn here as he's running up to it. Oh, okay. And then picked it up off the ground. His channel doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But like, like that kind of shit. You're just like, come on. Like how, how, like somebody's going to find that. Have you guys seen the, the video? It's an older video. It's from like four wipes ago, or maybe even three where the guy's like, he's playing. You see, you can see him focusing and playing. And all of a sudden he's looking left at his other monitor. He's like, there's a th there's a th four man three man three man coming from Ollie and then he like looks back and it's just like it's like you're streaming how how can you be that stupid you know Rip. <laughs> like how can you be that blatant with 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 a radar and you know and and that's one thing getting off of the contact in the spirit world man <laughs> and yeah. getting off of the cheating topic because again I think we all are in agreement it sucks it's we all understand it's a thing um, but we don't. Like, you know, viewers will come in and they'll be like, oh, I've been killed by a cheater's four raids in a row and they keep they keep finding me and blah, blah. No, you have not. You got killed by probably two really good players. You got maybe cheated maybe once and the other time was probably desync or lag or a server issue. Yesterday, the server's really bad. In turn, I got killed because of desync like three fucking times. The reason I know, because I have max strength, max endurance, and I was behind a wall two steps to the left and I got fucking head iced. It's, yep. it's, it's easy to be able to see that it's fucking sucks. We all get frustrated, but like we've already talked about once, it's something that they're trying to make better. There's not a game anywhere close to Tarkov. There's not a game that has any s solutions or anything to where Nikita can wake up one day and base his fixes or his coding off of something else. It is a completely new a uh, game that has no competitors when it comes to the realism, the uh, the way it performs, the FPS, everything like that. It's they they have to build it from the ground up, and that's fucking hard. It's hard, yeah. you know. Um, Did you but, guys see the uh, the suggestion that I made on Twitter about the red key card? No. So what I suggested was they increase the red key card spawn rate to like one percent on Shoreline, right? Like one out of a hundred raids, you'd see one. But then you make it one-time use. And then you buff the fuck out of the red key card room and make it, like, absurdly good loot. Mm. Right? Then you, you cross-reference. If somebody loots that room, you cross-reference it against whether or not somebody used a red key card that raid. If they didn't, it, you just play find the cheater and bye-bye. I mean, there's probably, like, ways, more simple ways to... Like, realistically, oh, there's so many different ways bitching. to... And the the like point that. here is that it, it kind of is two birds with one stone because people bitch that the red key card isn't worth it anymore and the room's garbage, right? 
if you buff the rate, then people go like, oh, I found a red key card and it's special again because they know that it's a one time run on that loot room and like it's amazing. Maybe you need like an oh shit button on the inside so that somebody doesn't get locked in because it's one time and don't and gone or whatever. But uh, I looked at it like you could do it twofold because, you know, then the labs cheaters can't just run through and like loot the joint and get away scot free. But being someone who has acquired his basically lab set now, granted, I acquired mine from fucking viewers and i will say that till the day i die like it it, i haven't accepted any key on any map the entire wipe mark key marion key hillside house key none of that none of it but i wanted to learn labs labs isn't worth it unless you have keys and i was like hey you know i have a yellow key card i'll take a couple key cards i want to try it out because next wipe is when i'm this is actually going to become a thing right i'm I am free gear on labs if I'm solo. I really am. I don't know the map. I'm not very good at it. Um, But I, from someone who had just started playing it, I don't like the idea of having permanent key that will always get you loot on a map. I think a duration or an amount of key, even if it's 100, like Marin and uh, Hillside, I would rather that than a key that is just, I have this forever. For the entire wipe. Now, again, this is coming from someone who didn't acquire it legitimately. And I understand that there's a lot of people who are like, man, if you acquired it the, the way it was supposed to be acquired, you would only have this key or that key, which I say bullshit. Because you look at all these lab mains and you look at the people who know how to make money or whatever, and they just buy the shit anyways, right? They buy it, they trade for it, whatever, and they get the keys and then they're able to do whatever the fuck they want for the rest of the wipe on labs. And they'll never go anywhere else because they're they have them, right? They bought them all. Fuck it. Yep. Um, I mean, uh, but that's like looking at it from the standpoint of the labs will the game will always be the same way it is now, where you agreed. select your map and you get to load in. Like yep. they're going to connect all the maps. It's going to be more of an open world basis. So there's not really a sense like a one time use. I'd be okay, more okay with it being without is now to where you can pick labs, load in anytime you want as long as you have an access card. But with once they go to where they connect all the maps and you have to like actually work the way through a different map to get into labs, et cetera, how they've talked about in the past. It, I, I don't know if I'd want a one time use key on top of that. Um, but I honestly, I don't have red key now. It's not worth it. So, you know, uh, they, they, they need an adjustment one way or another, that in blue, because both those yeah. are just so overly priced for the amount of loot you're able to get out. Of. It's just not really uh, it's not yeah. really. I've only ever found that key once on, on any map ever. Like, I only ever found red one time. And it was when I was purposefully trying to find it. It took me, like, 50 runs. I, I, I was, like, the first person that stim ran for red <laughs> key card, like, through the shoreline. I just kept, like, using, like, the, uh, the adrenaline and red and blue. Yeah. Red, blue, and adrenaline. Like, in, like, it was, like, blue, then red, then adrenaline, and then would just, like, bum rush it and fly through there, and I was gone before anybody else showed up. <laughs> SJ1, SJ6, and adrenaline shot, bro. Dude, I, had a, I had a route that, like, ran me through, like, food. It was, like, me and my gamma container and a pistol because pistols used to make you run faster if you held one. Yeah. And if you just had the hat, you would run faster. So I remember, like, pistol running through, and I kept a grenade in my gamma so that when I finished the run, I would blow myself up, and then I would just go back to stash and do it again, <laughs> trying to just chain run find it. And I, I got it in, like, run 50. That was, like, that was around the time that that dude made that video that said that he played Tarkov for, like, 36 hours straight and never got the red key because he was trying to, he just, like, chain farm ran it and never got the red key card. It got, like, a million views on on YouTube when he made that video. It was pretty good. It was good yeah, content. I think um, I've, I've only ever got the yellow card. I've gotten it three fucking times. I found it on day three of wipe. I got I killed a, a scav for a mark key. Uh, it was kind of fucked up. Said I was friendly and then shot him in the back of the head. Um, and then I took the mark key, opened it up, boom, key holder. I'm like, holy shit. I've seen nice. videos of people pulling out four different types of cars. I opened it up, fucking yellow. Um, and then I got two more yellows out of uh, intelligence from uh, my scab Yellow's case. an SD card now, though. Yeah, that's so. my fucking card, dude. And it sucks. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so. I mean, honestly, yellow is probably the best room on the map besides black. And green. Black room is... Yeah, yellow's, yellow's like really good now. Like if I had to hit one or the other, I probably would go in yellow just for this the speed of it. You go in, hit two spots, and you're out. Yeah. Go into yeah. chairs, and I guess the desk, too, and you're out. Yeah, so... Well, I've, I, I've I, got, only... I got a hillside house key the first day of the wipe. I ended really? up finding it in a jacket. No one knew what it was. Like, 
you know, I, I was the first person to have all eight keys because I made that video about, like, where all the lock doors were. And no one knew, like, how good Marin was or any of that shit. Like, no one had a Marin key. No one. And I was, I like, I remember doing, like, 40 raids and, like, no one even knew about the car. And I was just, I was, dude, like, millions. Yeah. Dude, I had, I, I looted, like, 27 aces or some shit. Like, it was so stupid. I was like, oh, look, another casual Asa. Like, I was just vendoring them. Because, like, so you know, day, day one, I didn't have the flea market yet. I didn't have the flea market yet, but I had all the keys. So I was just like, it was, it was dumb, actually. So lucky, bro. Yeah. yeah well, that, was, um, was, nobody knew what they were. Like, nobody yeah. knew if the loot was any good. So, like, I was like passing around the collection plate. Like, do you have this key? You know? <laughs> Somebody was like, oh, I have the Marin car. All right, cool. And then it turned out that the Marin car was fucking bonkers. And I was like, do you want the key back? And he's like, nah, fuck it. You can keep it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make like 30 million rubles. But all right. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, dude, the lighthouse at the early of the wipe was so ridiculous. And I remember I swore it off. So and I good. was like, I'm only going to play customs, you know, because I was still in that mindset that I wasn't going to quest or whatever. And then – um, fuck out of it. They nerfed the fuck out. Yeah, of it. I remember so when I first went to Lighthouse and uh, I was like sub one million rubles, barely getting by. I played Lighthouse for two days and I was already at like fifteen million, and yeah. it was like the easiest ruble climb of my life because you would literally go Lou House, you would get two million right off the rip. Every spawn had either a Bitcoin, Asa. Or yeah, um, so many rare ones, SC dude. 110s <laughs> or Veritas picks out the yin yang or bitcoins and everything you could think of, you would get. Every scam that died had like 500k worth of shit in their bag. <laughs> Military like, hoses on the boxes. Like, <laughs> like it was just. House is a literal land of milk and honey, dude. It was amazing. Yeah, man. Okay. And it was just unbelievable. I think Lighthouse is in a better spot now for sure when it comes to loot. Like, you can still go there. I mean, we had a run yesterday where I made like 1.7 million off of one run. But that is like within itself, it's it's somewhat random. And I, and I was in that run with him. I, I made bank as well. So it wasn't, it's not even like a solo map. It's like you can go in there with a squad and just come out filthy rich. Yeah. yeah, dude. Um, scav, dude, scav running loot house was like the move because you'd go, you just go is. up the beach, up the beach, building one to building two. Yep. You, like loot everything on the way, and then all of a sudden you have you have two million rubles, and like you know nine times out of ten you'd get the bug where like none of the USEC uh, rogues would aggro you, and you just slap them on the ass on the way by and grab all your stuff. Now is that a they bug or is that intended? Uh, that's one thing I, I've bitched about on stream a lot is, uh, you know, I hate the fact that a scav can walk in center, center, you sec, bro, or uh, center, center, road camp, walk all the way through, yeah. come straight to me because they heard me nading out the rogues. I kill the rogues. I get all the loot. I'm heavy as a bitch. I jump over the rail and I get one tap by, you know, they spawned in with an M61 Hunter or they picked up uh, an M856 M4 that I couldn't fit in my big ass bag or something and I get one tap. Yep. So my question yep. is, is, is that actually intended? And if so, what the fuck are they thinking? So according to the devs and their patch notes, it's supposed to be where like you can get close, but not too close. And they're supposed to let you up after you get within like a certain radius of them. Okay. But that doesn't happen. Nope. Like the most of the time. The the only thing that I can attribute it to is that you get like a an overzealous player scav that takes a shot at a rogue and then they aggro every player scav from that point on out. But even that doesn't happen all the time because you'll have like a guy that's ten meters out get completely lit up and they're just like, Oh yeah, you're cool. And like you can just walk in and like be like, Hey man, what's up? Like we're, we're good. Right. And I'm just going to take everything and like continue on, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, it seems very, very, uh, buggy, very buggy. Now I'll say but this also to, like, let, just let you walk by. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this also. I think they need to, I understand the lore and the whatever between bear and Usec. um, too. They got to tone down the bear aggro, man. It's fucking Bears are Locked up. I feel so yeah, bad. Tone it people. down until they release streets, and then they can tone it back up to as much as they want. Like I like the idea that roaming streets, like Usec, might be more difficult. And you know, if you want to go hit the trader or lighthouse, a Usec's gonna have an easier time than a bear. But just avoid the Usec camp, you know. And it's a small portion of the overall map. Like I'm okay with that because, yeah. if, like, you look at the grand scheme of the, the grand scheme of the map. Like Usec camp is a very very small portion. 
Agreed. And, and yeah. you know, streets might be a little bit bigger portion, but you have a roaming boss that will fuck you up as you go. Like, whatever they want to do with it, right? I'm okay with it in the future. Right now, I think that it's a little too much. That It makes it to where, yeah, if you chose bear, you kind of fucked yourself this way. I'm playing Lighthouse. You could, I mean, you can't avoid it. It's it's playable. It's, you just it's keep so it. shitty, though. Bro, like, I, I have seen... You I, hard, I have I was seen... Amazed. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, like I, 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 I'm, I'm Usec. I'm always Usec because you know I'm repping forty because he's my boy, and I'm like I'm gonna use my man's voice, you know. So um, I've I've repped forty for like every reset I've done for I don't know, ever since he did the voice stuff. Mm. Um, but I played with Terrence. I played with Terrence a couple of weeks back, and he's a bear, and he's like, yeah, bears are fucked on this map. I'm like, come on, it can't be that bad. And I was grouped with him which means I'm automatically insta aggro from like 400 meters. And I climbed that like little ridge over by the store. It was like four, 400 meters out from like the nearest 50 cal yep. and two tap in the chest. The moment they saw me, I was like, holy. <laughs> like, I was like, dude, this is awful. Like, I, Cause I'll, I'll hunt them every raid and they don't aggro me at all. Like I can just walk yeah. around. Like they don't care. I have to get within like 150 meters for them to like start shooting at me. But bears, it's like, man, they've been they were tracking you since you loaded. Since Nom, dude. <laughs> Bro, I, I have literally seen bears, man. I've seen bears walk across the highway going to uh I call it Mayor's house, whatever you want to call it. It's the house by the corner next to the little shopping mart. Um, it's like right off the main highway before you cross the main bridge into the USEC camp where all the rogues. House? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, big brown house. Yeah, okay. Um, and I will literally see bears getting demolished as they are at the door entering into that house like we're mm. crossing the main highway and just getting gunned down by these rogues and i'm just like i would never play this map if that was me and I, yeah. it's this i will say it's I, crazy. I, I went i went through with a pistol on a bear account and cleared out the rogues like multiple times so it, it's doable you have to be more precise with the routing and you're right that's the cutoff point is the mayor's house like if you go past that and want to go over the land bridges, you're fucked as a bear count. You can't do it unless unless the rogues already cleared off the south portion of the camp and even even the uh, turrets. You're gonna have to take them out. But if you start in on the southeast of the camp as a bear, you you can do it. They will aggro aggro you more. But like I literally took the exact ex, exact same path I take on my USEC, except I don't go across the land bridge. But then we and go in. What this thing is is when you're a when you're a Tarkov god like Sheaf. <laughs> but then no, you get into that. that you can you can still cheese the ai which is what's yeah, stupid. Yeah. like they, they yeah. don't have it fine-tuned enough to where it's like you 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 have to take these exact routes these you have to be very precise with your footsteps which is kind of like it makes it fun but then it's also a portion where like once you get it down it's it's either ridiculously hard or ridiculously easy and there's no in between once you learn how to cheese the ai mechanic it turns into a ridiculously easy thing captain and, of the evasion gg team by the way <laughs> but here's my thing Here, here's my thing and I, I come from uh and i do this every game i play i always think about the guys who aren't the students of the game right like i would consider all of us students of tarkov like we've all yeah. watched i mean fucking one pegs the teacher right like we've all like we've all been there and we've all like wanted to study and understand the mechanical value of the game i am i had fucking foam in my pc for two years all right i'm not the smartest guy in the world but because of guys like you two i learn a lot from like a second hand second hand knowledge um and for me whenever i first played the game it asked me you sec or bear and basically that meant do you want to talk in english or you want to talk in russian that's all i knew yeah. i didn't care about yep. the lore i didn't care about nothing i went there you could test line the voice line i heard 40's voice and i said looks like i'm being a usec and if that is your if that is you which is i would like to think probably 60 percent plus of the player base probably like 90 percent, dude that's probably like exactly so many players it was just like, like do I want like, to talk Russian or English? Like it was yeah. like 70 30 before Lighthouse came out. Okay. And so I think, and then when they when they put out the patch notes like the day before that said like they're gonna aggro bears, I'm sure that that percentage has gotten it's worse. Crazy. I kid you not, my exact thought process with when I first chose was like, I don't know what the fuck a USEC is, but I know what a bear is. That's kind of cool, but I don't I don't know what a USEC is, so I'm gonna go USEC. 
that was my exact thought process. So like, I know coming from that mindset, coming from that mindset, imagine this, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who just came over from, we'll just, we'll use a triple A game title like Warzone, or we'll even say Valorant or any of those type of games, right? The, the newer people to Tarkov, you already have to struggle with the fact that mm -hmm. this game, no matter who you are, you are going to suck when you first start. It doesn't matter how good of an FPS god you are. You could be Shroud himself. And if it's your first raid and you're trying to learn the mechanics and you're trying to learn the sprays and you're trying to learn this, that, and the other, you are going to suck. And not everybody is Shroud. So then you're taking the people who already suck at whatever the game they're playing and they want to test out Tarkov. So they pick Bear. And then you get mowed down by an map. M. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like and that, that might have been the one kit that you wanted to really fucking run, and exactly. like you know, you're limited on rubles. You you the starting gear is such shit, and you don't have a ton of time, and you're playing against people that do commit a ton of time because that's what it takes in Tarkov is time. And it, like yeah. if you don't if you don't have it, like get fucked really. And so it's yeah. it, it's, it's unfortunate. all about time. Yeah. Um. The the thing with the AI is like as a whole. Um, with the scav spawning in, I'm okay. Like, don't get me wrong, I would rather not fight a scav horde, but I also can see the backside of it to where, um, it, it's going to give them more results. Like, they're going to get, you know, what, 25%, 20% more tests done or more d data from those scav runs. And because essentially we're beta testers and we're stress testing their maps and their, their, their shit for them. And so if they load the map up with player scavs and keep filling in, if you have a, map with 10 players on it and a bunch of those pmcs die right off the start because everyone wants to rush chalet then it makes sense to spawn in five or six more player scavs for the next few minutes to get more players in the map and try to try to keep a population going it keeps the map more fun as a whole rather than just being a completely dead loot fest it's like although we all like loot don't get me wrong i think the overall it, the, the reason the loot's fun is because we have that risk of death of not course. because we could just run around and pick shit up it's because there's a risk of going around picking shit up and dying while doing it yep. and so having those random scavs roam around is kind of nice but it, it it gets overwhelming when you got to fight 10 to 15 of them to get out of the fucking map sometimes but at the same time, like if it gives them more data to work with, like fuck it, I'm I'm okay with that. I can see the backside of it, and and I it, it could help. I um the rogues they they need to fine tune them a little bit more. Like I do I in one peg I think you can test this. He's ran him probably just as much as I have, but I've been spamming him since the map came or since the wipe, and um overall they they they're just so bot like they're they're supposed to be a lot harder to fight, and they like practice. That's all. Yeah, I know. I, I, at the end of the day, they're free XP. They spawn 100% of the time. It's free loot. Like they take all the shit away from the um, the flea market, but then make the bots like they did there. It'd be nice to see the center ones roam around a lot more and agree. Tone down the aim bot and make them roam around a lot more. Make them to where it's not like okay, you shoot one, it's like oh, what what, what just happened to my friend? Let me fucking go walk right into the same path. <laughs> I'm gonna take another fucking bullet. What just happened yeah. to my friend? I'm gonna go do the same thing. What just happened to my friend? I'm gonna it's go like do the, the same thing. It's like the Skyrim bullets. meme, bro. Why? Like you sh Why? you shoot an AI in the eyeball with an arrow, and it's like, hmm, what the fuck was that? And after two seconds, it's like, ah, it must have been my imagination. And there's an arrow in his fucking head, right? And and, that's and the thing is, what I would love is if like you popped one. And another one radioed to like the dudes in the center on the ground or like the guys in buildings. And they all swarmed. And you got fucking pushed. Amen. Like a four man squad started pushing your ass. Like because they aren't confined to like that stupid little zonal like AI area that they can't get out of. Response, dude. It's like the, the secondary spots that they'll go to. It's like it's it's stupid as fuck. Got the, the helicopter and then that little construction donut in the inside. That's that group of three. And then the group of four just runs around building two. The and only never thing about leave. the rogues is, is their freakish accuracy. They're their aim bots, but yeah, that's the only problem with them. Tone down their aim bots and then make them roam around more. It, it would tone up the difficulty tenfold for the players that actually want to run it. That they wouldn't be able to just cheese the fuck out of the AI and win win the game. Period. They would be they would have to actually play accordingly to so many more situations rather than like four. And Dude, it would be more fun. Man, It'd be that, more fun if that bot three man. Or the or the foreman from building two pulled a fucking pincer and sent oh two guys God. up to the cliff oh, and like the other two guys around to the left oh side and then they came up on the lake at the same time trying to push you, like it would be a completely different experience. And you would get so frustrated because you'd be yeah. so fucked. Yeah. You know. But they need to tone down the AI because I wouldn't want that plus the the aim body shit that they do now. And so it's kind of like uh, 
what, what Hutch said earlier, where it's like instead of adding new mechanics, it's like fix the ones that you currently have. I think I completely agree. Or something that they they need to fine tune a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't think that they're currently there. I mean, shit, this is the first iteration. The wipe's been going on like what two months? Like they've got yeah. so much on their plate. Like we can't really be like, oh, fix this, fix this, fix this. And I know that I know that Nikita's working on it because he did that big ass conversation with Veritas. Because V V did a video about like all the AI issues that Tarkov has, and I think Nikita listened, and then they did like a like a chat about it like in a yeah that's what i was video. talking about with the when yeah. when they do the the burpees or they do the walk back and forth yeah, yeah. 30 times and then you know that's just the ai yeah, this, was more like, this was more like them acting tactically instead of like instead of like the guy on the 50 cal suddenly aggroing you when you're walking through the middle of a rogue building yep. and then trying to tap you with the 50 through the wall when he shouldn't be able to see you but is tracking you anyway or like how the AI basically goes like, I know exactly where you are, but I'm not going to turn and look at you for like four to five seconds. And then I'm going to snap aim on you and drop your ass. Yep. You know, like they shouldn't have that kind of advanced knowledge. And Nikita's like, at least he's listened to it because it really does need to change. Like they need to be, they need to be uh, tactically difficult, not just like uh, the crutch, which is like the aimbot bullshit because it's a crutch. It the is. only thing that makes them hard is that they're hyper accurate. Yep. You know. Yep, that's exactly it. I think and so, um, I, me and uh, me and Chief, uh, I showed him my route, and he was uh, he was pretty stunned by it because <laughs> we we literally no no bullshit, no exaggeration. Um, we 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 literally uh, would go down from Sniper Hill. Yeah. Um, and run by. Like there's two buildings, and we would literally run within a hundred meters. Not this, it's a bear. Tap a gunner, <laughs> run to the right, and then clear out all the rogues. And then if we wanted to kill the other ones, we could, but they just don't have eyes on us, and we're avoiding ninety percent of the camp. And it's the easiest loot ever. Like you, you can sit there and have four thousand rounds of BP if you wanted, and just keep doing this uh, this route. And the only way you die is like you're saying, the aimbot. It's the only yeah. way. It's like when you're doing the running jump across and they don't kill you 99% of the time, that 1% will happen. Or you push yeah. up on the building and you check the, the rafters and then they're actually there and they aim bot you or you, you shoot yeah. one. And instead of running right down the lane, like they do all the time, they'll stay left and you can only shoot them in their arm. And then they slide tackle, kill a aim by you, you know, how many, um, how many times have you seen them actually on that catwalk and building two, like looking down the garage door? I have like, went recently a lot. I've yeah, went I've in only, there I've probably three times. Yeah, I've only, I've went in there probably over fifty to a hundred times without exaggeration. I have over sixteen hundred raids in Tarkov right now, and uh, Lighthouse was nice. my main map um, nice. with with those raids. So I have a lot of experience on that map. And out of all of those raids, I have probably had that happen to me, and I died twice. Yeah, um, I've seen them. I think I've seen them upstairs, like willing to shoot at you like three times now have i seen them up there and i have shot at them probably over a dozen but when have i whenever i would just run in there and not check it and even if you have that idea in the back of your head and you check it there's no way for them to counter it because you could just shoot them in the arm and then force them down to the other side aggro them and then they all run out and even them yep. running out is so bot like because they don't push further they just go they're to the corner of the building line. yeah they, they just run behind each other like a row of ducks and they run to the corner they slide on a knee they turn around then they stand up and if you're not slow right peaked you get one tapped and even yep. if you are slow right peaked and you miss a shot you get one tapped that the only randomness when it comes to rogues the only thing that comes to to, to rogues when it comes to randomness and it comes to punishment is whenever they aim bot you, and even when they aim bot you, it has to be one of the rogues with BP, which is one or two. Yeah, and I, and I just sit up on the cliff and like take my time and snipe all of them. Yeah, try to like beat myself because I don't want to miss. So I'll I'll do like fourteen shots for, you know, twelve rogues or something, and be like, all right, cool, I got like ninety percent accuracy. I need to try for a hundred percent next raid. Yeah, like that's like the challenge now. It's like how accurate can I be? It's it's uh it's at a point where uh, I think Chief hit the nail on the head. It it's we have in every game, no matter what kind of game it is, people try and figure out the way to cheese it. That's just that's, that's just yep, us. Yep. Me in a nutshell. 
Yeah, it's yeah. And, and it's fun. It's fun. I remember even back if you talk about fucking Call of Duty, Nazi zombies. I was fucking 12 years old. And I was sitting in the wall to where the zombies couldn't get me with a flamethrower, making it to round 57. Like that's just yeah. us. That's that's just that's just the way humans are. We we want to we want to make something if it's hard, we want it to seem easy and it's fucking content because new players come in, they're in your channel, they want to see how you kill rogues and you're sitting there and you're able to just be like, "Hey guys, you go here, lean peek tap through the door you can't be aggroed you run over here you lean peek tap all four rogues on the side of the building you loot this get a graphics card you extract a north extract and you're done yep. that's it and easy money yeah easy money easy way to get in to get loot it's the same thing with lighthouse how when you guys when when lighthouse first started and it was so disgustingly looted how many times did you guys run into hatchet runners shotgun with no armor and and people like that I ran into him every fucking raid. Every raid yeah, I, I was, went lighthouse. I was pistol running the shit out of that map because yeah. I was just looting. Because no one, no one knew about when I was loot running the shit out of that. No one knew about Marin Car and no one knew about Hillside House. So I would go, I would go Marin Car to the store and then up to Hillside House and then I would just leave through the shoreline exit, and yeah. I'd have a million rubles. Like, I'll, still, I'll still pistol run rogues. That shit's fun. It's it's like <laughs> yeah. you know it's a zero to hero without having to find the fucking gun. You have something to defend yourself, but it's like at the bare minimum type shit. Yeah. So yeah. I, mean, I can see the aspect of it. I don't necessarily do it for like the, the rubles that um, even though it would be, you know, absolutely phenomenal. But I it's more just to have fun on the game. I I don't really see a problem with hatchet running or pistol running, but it, the, the map definitely uh, uh, incentivizes it for sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought Tarkov. Yeah, exactly. Just... Yep. Um, I think. Because we are pushing it on time, we're at that thirty-minute mark. So, I think the uh, the uh, the last thing I, I do want to talk about uh, when it comes to Tarkov is what is next. Obviously, uh, there's been guesstimates on when the next wipe is going to be. Uh, they've Nikita kind of I don't want to say leaked, but he said that the obviously the trader on, on Lighthouse. Um, do you guys think that they're going to release that with a wipe behind it? I think we can all agree we're looking at for the next wipe, hopefully, maybe possibly two and a half months. Um, uh, yeah. that's that's my guesstimate. It's gonna be July, would be my guess. Yeah. yeah. So with that being said, do you think they're gonna follow it with a wipe? Do you think that they're not gonna follow it with a wipe? And if so, what's the ETA? Because I know we've been told at the end of the year, but what's the realistic <laughs> realistic ETA for streets. They're not going to have. I don't think like, we get it this year. I don't like uh, Nikita wants to release the game by the end of the year. So I think one of two things is, is going to happen. Either they push the release date, which is most likely. And they like, if I was going to timeline this, so people were saying like, Oh yeah, they're going to have, uh, they're going to have uh, lighthouses expansion by the end of Q1 of this year. And I was like, bullshit. Uh, I'm calling June, June, July lighthouse expansion with the, with the AI trader and you know, the bosses and all that stuff will happen in like June or July. It'll come with a wipe. They'll, they'll, that'll be like their, their wipe hype shit. Two weeks after that, there'll be another Twitch drops event. Cause that's what they do. And then somewhere around Christmas, if they can get it out, they will put in like the first part of streets of Tarkov as like the new year's event if they can manage it at some point in between we'll end up being like a new version of unity because you know unity 2019 or 2020 whatever one we're on now that's coming up they'll they'll end up uh, implementing that like somewhere around like october november and then they'll they'll wipe the game around christmas again and probably put in like the area of streets that they were teasing with the trailer and the btr and all that stuff but we probably won't get the btr then would be my guess and then they'll they'll do like a yep Tarkov 1.0 for like 2023 or something, which I think Nikita hates because there's no way he's gonna put out Russia 2028 before we actually get a 2028. Yep, based on the timeline of how this game has been with his like because 2028 is like his magnum opus, so he's gonna have to like I think he's gonna have to change the date. It's gonna be like Russia 2035 or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> like it's gonna take him more than five years to generate that game. There's no way. I'm fine with them taking their time on well. I mean, I guess that came too, but Tarkov in general, I don't necessarily think they need to rush it to stick to a deadline and try to get streets out this year. 
if it's done and, it, and it's ready, then hell yeah, hit us with it. But like, you know, we saw with Lighthouse, that Lighthouse was released and it was playable, but it's still super stuttery and like, you know, maybe a quarter to half of the player base struggles to be able to play it because of frame issues or stutters and whatnot. And so it's kind of, I, I would rather them take their time and not be rushed to have to put out new content just for the sake of putting out new content. I would rather them put it out whenever they deem it ready. Um, and so I'm fine with them pushing back streets and the full release of the game until next year and, or until whenever they deem it ready. Because again, you know, I would rather a finished product than, you know, something well, playable. And he wants arena to be implemented by the time that they do the 1.0 release, like streets and arena is supposed to be relatively simultaneously. So like, that's a whole other like, standalone like arena, thing. easy though. Yeah. I mean, it well, could be pretty easy to do it. it but like, that's a, copying and pasting over elements yeah it'll they'll probably end up just using like uh like contract wars maps or some shit yep and call it tarkov arena because yep. they have they have the same assets as it is like they're all sharing that shit anyway so I, I, either either way I, I doubt we get it this year i'd be fucking ecstatic if we do like good lord yeah. especially considering how fast the last two years have gone by like yeah here's you know. here's another fun thought uh we're because of rmt shit we're we're limited on how much money we can carry right mm -hmm. So that means that more than likely the trader on Lighthouse, if he does actually trade shit and he isn't just some NPC that you talk to, he'll have to have mostly barter stuff anyway. Because if he had anything that was worth any real value, we wouldn't have the ability to carry in enough rubles to be able to buy it. So the likelihood that he's going to be like money based is really low, mm. I think. Right? Because like, what can we carry? Like 200,000? 250? 250,000. Yeah, so we like a quarter million. You know, that's not going to buy much. You know, if we're talking like an in-map in, 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 uh, in trader, and he's probably going to have super limited stock of shit too, you know? And I want, now the, the I, what I wonder is if he's going to be, like if his limited stock is going to be based on like the, the instance loading and like each map he has X amount of something, or if it's going to be one of those like his inventory is shared globally like all the other traders are, and he, like, even though you load in and you have the, the, the ticket to get in, which they could burn on you if you get to him and go to trade with him if he's empty. I kind of mm -hmm. picture him as like a uh, safe zone. Like that whole lighthouse is kind of a safe zone. And you even had an extract out the back there to where like if you made it to that point, you, you had to fight to get there. But once you made it to that point, you're safe. You're not going to get cucked and like just absolutely shit on trying to leave the lighthouse with your freshly bought loot. It just would incentivize camping right outside of it and waiting and I, I feel like if they had an extract on the backside of it, you like go in, uh, look, hit you up your bank account and it, you know, you have your access to the rubles at the top, right? So it's not necessarily like you could have it access to your stash, but theoretically they could easily change it to like a digital currency. Right. Yeah. And, uh, just have access next to the trader and boom, you, you could have the trader be able to purchase really whatever now in game items, uh, or the items themselves other than cash, I feel like it would be kind of cool to have to bring those in raid and bring them to the trader yeah. to get shit. Um, yeah. Well, it, it, it made it so that you couldn't carry them in your gamma either. See, you know, it was, I'd be okay with it. You know, that, just sound, that sounds like, like a very risk. hardcore fucking game. Yeah. And like, I would, it, love, it. It's, I would it's, love that. Now, like, in terms of it being a safe zone, though, I don't know, because we know that one of the scav bosses at the very least will be perched there. Like, yeah. he's going to be a physical boss at the lighthouse. Like, like guarding. So... Okay, fair. Or, or what if you had him out by the train? You know, there's the offices next to the train yard. What if he's just a use? I figured, I figured he'd be up in the top. At the lighthouse. Like, the light. like or you could just have like bodyguards at the lighthouse and be like, yo, check your fucking weapon at the door. You know See, what I mean? And, and that's, yeah. that's what I would you, like. You bring your weapon past a certain point, sniper scavs gun your ass down. So you put your weapon away, you bolt, pull out a melee weapon or put your melee weapon away too. You come out guns, no guns and just go to the fucking door and you're good. And then when you go inside, you can't access your guns. And it's like, you could see other people in there. You could talk to people. You know what I mean? It's an open world still, but once you get in there, it's a no way to stay away kind of thing. See, and maybe here's my out. thing. Here, here's the way Trader I am. Behind a door. If I had a, if I had a conversation with Nikita tomorrow, here, here's my idea. I even think the whole bringing the specific items for barter and this, that, and the other, that's cool. And that's awesome. I think that'd be sick. The next step that I think would be even cooler would be if there was a a fourth currency because right now we have rubles we have euros and we have dollars if there was a fourth currency that was only used at the lighthouse trader himself so you could bring in 
high value items out of your god i hope it's not in gamma but out of your gamma go and trade for that <laughs> currency and then use the specific currency that is used at the lighthouse to buy things if it's a no, dollar it's if it's a crypto if it's anything so like instead of just bringing in for the 17th time three bandanas a used napkin and a fucking piece of pound cake you could bring in you know your night vision your couple bitcoins veritas pick whatever you bring all that in you trade it for the currency and then you can buy stuff and it solves the issue of the 200 yeah. it's 280,000 rubles uh, chat made sure that they corrected me on that 280,000 yeah it's the 280,000 dollar max and it, it avoids that and it makes you have to bring in items that is uh hopefully out of gamma i hope that all the items that you have to bring is all out of gamma items for the trade because i feel like that would be sick because the last thing you want to do is is people just bringing in stuff in their ass with zero risk and being able to get the riskiest items in the game which is high tier loot so there was a lore thing that happened like a year and a half two years ago where they were talking like when they when they cut the value of bitcoin back when bitcoin was trading at you know 50k plus yeah and uh btc in game was like a million rubles and they they cut it by two-thirds or whatever they had put out like a little news article saying that btc was getting devalued like lore wise they said like btc was getting devalued because of another more preferential form of cryptocurrency exactly so maybe that's the time that they introduce it i don't know yeah and maybe they throw ethereum mm -hmm. in there or another there's a billion different fucking coins that they can pick from to throw in there um but i feel like that'd be really cool now talking about the checking in the guns at the gate i am a thousand percent in on that because as someone who played rust at the start of his streaming i don't want to say career but at the start of his time streaming one of the things that they, people would do in safe zones is is and if this happened to me i would shit a living chicken on nikita's couch um is like if someone walked in with a fucking pistol with bt rounds bro and i'm in the middle of trading and he has absolutely nothing on his person and he walks up behind me and puts a bullet in his head and then he dies i die i lose all my stuff he loses absolutely nothing because he's there just to troll and be an asshole or he's stream sniping yep. or whatever that will yep. ruin that so quick and just yep. like Chief said, if Extract Camper's sitting on the hill right outside and I have to wait until the end of the raid for him to either go and extract and knowing him, he's a very dedicated human being. So he's going to sit on that motherfucker in a location that I, as a right side peak that I'm dead anyways. He's going to one tap me when I walk out. Also will ruin it. I think they it still should, have. Sorry, right? go ahead. I think it should be no, something no. to where you check in your gun. You walk to you buy whatever you have the choice to either walk out and and take your gun back out or when you extract at the back your gun goes to your stash and meets you there or it's like packaged and sent if you want to include the lore uh it, it gets sent or you whatever just make it to where if i fight my ass off and if i grind to finally get to the camp to trade my valued goods and i leave or i want to leave let me leave don't make me fight through the extract campers. Don't make me fight through the 13 player scabs that are all sitting outside the front gate. If I make it there, I should make it there. And I should be mm -hmm. having a direct line yeah, to reward. my stash. Because at the end of the day, if we're talking about lore, it's, it's one of those things where Nikita even said that he doesn't want you to have to feel like you got to go all the way up to labs and then you got to go all the way back down to shoreline and then you extract the extract supposed to be center center on the map. Correct me if I'm wrong, like your stash or your, your safe place. It's supposed to be somewhere centered in the map. And if, if I have to, you know, go back through the hell that I came through just to leave, yeah. I don't like that. It, they've talked about adding in like a car extract that you can send your loot out with. Yeah, so like I'm sure they'll have something with lighthouse to where it's like, you could either take it as an extract or you could just send your loot out. Yeah. Because so you go, you can bring stuff. Shit in. Yeah. You could bring your shit in, send it out or you can go out with it. But I, I'm okay with either way. If they have it to where you have to clear out the full fucking thing and you have to work for getting in there to hit the trader. I'm okay with it. Um, I personally would rather it be a safe zone though, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I worry about it in that case is like, if the rogue AI, being what it is, is the type of AI that we have for like a sniper scav boss, or like minions, you could just chill on the hill next to that downed ass helicopter, and snipe everything. Yep. 
with with a stock R seven hundred and a shit bag scope yep. and trivialize all of it, it, it won't matter. Because all you, if you're accurate with one shot with M eighty and the guy doesn't wear a helmet, you know, sniper probably won't wear a helmet. He's probably just gonna be another Sturman. You know, you snipe that guy and it's gonna be easy. It's game and over. Then then the whole then the whole place is, you know, just a loot fest. So you know, I, I I'll be curious to see like what he does because if they don't end up doing something different with the AI, uh, that those spots of like easy sight lines for a uh, sniper boss there is gonna be so so simplistic to kill. I mean, you could have like sniper boss and then his guards roaming the hallways and then um, the actual trader locked behind a door that has a slit in the middle of it that's like, yo, send your goods through here. I'll send my goods out. And yeah. you have to go in, clear it out. There's loot in there. And also a trader that you can hit. You can kill the rogues or the raiders or the boss guards, what have you, get their loot. So it's actually like a risk-reward thing. On It's actually sketchy to go in there, and but you get highly rewarded. Or it's you know a safe zone, and you, you're you know pretty much scot-free. If that uh, trader is killable, exactly. If they do make that trader killable, what do you think the rep hit will be? I don't know, but I'll tell you right now, you better not have a fucking cool bag, otherwise I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I uh I mean fuck dude, I killed Santa Claus and now I'll never be able to go do a scav run, uh the rest of wipe. So I think it's gonna be pretty severe. Uh oh, no. no doubt. Especially if he got a, you know, the therapist, she thick. So if he got a relationship with her and she gets upset, like she gets upset when we kill Sanitar, I mean, it's, we're fucked there too. So, yeah. um, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of questions when it comes to that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, we just got to hope. And we, in my, in my personal opinion, I hope that they either choose one or the other. If they're going to make it a safe house, make it yeah, a safe exactly. house. If they're going to make it hell and have to fight for every last inch that you go in and you have to do it then make it hell like no other and make the reward like no other. Um, yeah. And I'm cool with either one. Whatever they pick, I mean, at the end of the day, like we talked about at the beginning of, uh, of the podcast, um, as long as Nikita decides to do something and he does it 1,000%, I think we're all going to be happy. The problem is, is and, and this isn't like his character, but if he half foot in, half foot out, if it's going to be good and it's going to be a safe house or if it's going to be bad and it's not going to be a safe house, the problem you're going to run into is is the fucking trolls, is the assholes who walk in there and make it a, an absolute impossible mission. Uh, just like, you know, if they if a scab were to walk in row camp and shoot you in the back of the head. Uh, but this time it's PMCs and they can do it whenever they want. You know, um, that's my only fear when it comes to that kind of stuff. So. But yeah, with the rep hit, I think the rep hit will be pretty fucking severe, bro. If you shoot that trader, yeah. But hey, if it's worth it, if it's it's worth it at the end of the day, you know. So, um, but yeah, man, uh, I think we're gonna conclude it here. Uh, we're just short under the two hour mark. So uh, I appreciate you guys being on. I will see you both next Thursday, and uh, thank you guys, man. I think this podcast yeah, my went awesome. Entirely. Hell yeah, dude! Had a lot of fun, man. Always. Absolutely, bro. All right, boys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, fellas. All right, see you guys. Chat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast tonight. Uh, I hope you guys in, enjoyed everything that we had to say. You guys agree, disagree, whatever. That is completely up to you. And we're happy that you guys came and watched. Um, our next podcast, for those who are going to be leaving, who came just for the podcast, I understand a lot of you guys have work tomorrow is going to be next Thursday. It's going to be a community podcast, including Sheep, One Peg, Glorious, Willers, and Robin. That's our next lineup. That's who we're going to have next week, next Thursday. Um, we're really, really excited to have those guys. Um, Robin and Willers is 100% glorious. It depends on if uh, he can make it work with his schedule. Because obviously, we all know Glorious streams at a later time and... You know, I don't want him to have to feel like he has to show up um, and and he, you know, there's there's zero way of him missing. So if he can make it, awesome. We can't wait to have him. If he can't, uh, then obviously we understand and it is what it is. Um, with that being said, boys, we have a new intro. We're going to watch it really quick uh, and then we'll start the regular stream. All right, boys. So uh, I'll see you guys in one minute.